Got sore and achy muscles after a workout? If you're looking for ways to hit fast forward on recovery, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining us today on the Loombox channel where we share science-based tips about red light therapy. My name is Fenella. I'm a former Masters of Science student at Stanford University where I also played on the varsity field hockey team. Prior to that, I played field hockey for the English national team, so I'm all about finding new ways to get back into the game faster and stronger. And I've got some cool tips to share with you. So if you're like me or like to work out regularly, you know we're always looking for quick and easy ways to one, avoid soreness, and two, speed up recovery so we can return to base level lines faster. So in this video, I'm gonna share my top five science back tips for speedy recovery so you can hit the gym sooner and harder. Number one, foam rolling. You don't need to do this for hours either. I like to roll out my legs, glutes, and back for about five minutes before and after working out. You can also use a massage gun to put more pressure on the deeper areas or roll on a lacrosse ball against a wall, like so, for areas like the glutes, hips, and upper back. Number two, eat to win. This phrase is ingrained in my brain after my coaches constantly reminded me throughout my sporting career that food is the key to recovery. It's so important to adequately fuel if your goal is to get the most out of a workout. A few hours before you work out, you want to eat about 0.5 to 1 gram of carbs per pound of body weight and about a quarter of that in protein. And after working out, recovery food in the first 30 minutes is key to feed your muscles and help them feel more fresh the next day. This is when you want to intake about 1 to 1.5 grams of carbs per pound of body weight and about half of that in protein. Do note that these ratios are likely to vary depending on your style and the length of the exercise you're doing. Number three, sleep. Do not neglect sleep if you want to recover faster. You may notice feeling fit more physically and mentally drained after a tough workout, and this isn't a sign for nothing. Building in quality rest is crucial to let your muscles relax, and sleep is this time to decrease the cortisol levels that have been heightened by stress during exercise or other stressful events throughout your day. Sleep also promotes growth hormones, allowing them to more effectively build tissue that experiences micro tears during exercise. Number four, cold therapy. You've probably heard the craze about cold showers and ice baths, but is it really true? Turns out there is some scientific evidence that's pretty solid behind the benefits of cold therapy. I like to ice bath or cold shower if an ice bath isn't available after working out. The cold temperature is known to decrease inflammation and swelling, for similar reasons as to why you'd want to use an ice pack on a bump or a bruise. It's best to get this in within an hour or two after working out to maximize the speed of recovery. Plus, I like to work out in the morning, so taking a cold shower or a plunge after exercise before starting the day helps increase my alertness for the day too. So with cold therapy, there's two techniques I like to use. The first is a contrast bath and a three to one or four to one ratio. So about three minutes cold and one minute hot, for example. You can do this for about 15 minutes total and make sure to end on cold. The second is more of a passive immersion. 10 minutes of straight cold therapy is sometimes easier than the contrast because you get kind of numb to the pain after a while. Anyway, experiment around with it and let us know how it goes in the comments. I will say that with ice therapy, it's not a one size fits all approach. Some conditions like heart disease or impaired circulation don't pair well with this type of recovery. There are other conditions too that you should avoid or modify cold treatment. So please do check with your doctor about that first. And then number five is my non-negotiable when it comes to recovery my ultimate stress reliever to get me back in the game faster. It's red light therapy. I love this one because it's so easy to take with me everywhere. And it's great for any kind of soreness, even if you're not working out a ton and are just feeling achy and sore from daily movements. Now, there are some studies showing that red light therapy may reduce muscle damage, inflammation, and oxidative stress caused by intense workouts. How does this translate to the outcomes you want though? Well, it means you'll experience less soreness, recover more quickly and be ready to hit the gym sooner for your next killer workout. Red light therapy has been studied a lot for its effects on inflammation in the body, as well as its impact on the repair and regeneration of tissue, like the muscle tissue in this case. If you're wondering how this can even be measured, well, listen up. When we exercise, we're basically temporarily damaging our muscles. And when this happens, there's a release of the enzyme creatine kinase in the blood. So measuring levels of this enzyme is a pretty useful marker when it comes to studying how well we recover. Another thing that happens during exercise is an increase in blood lactate. This is that feeling of heavy legs immediately after sprinting or after doing a workout that burns the muscles. And so the blood lactate is often measured using a finger pick, to test the blood, or by testing lactate in the urine to determine recovery. Let's take a look at some studies that measure both of these indicators of muscle damage. They also measure things like gene expression against oxidative stress, and the presence of inflammatory markers, where lower inflammation post-workout indicates reduced muscle damage. A randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover trial on 10 pro volleyball players studied the effects of red LED therapy on exercise-induced muscle fatigue and recovery. In this study, they used both red and near-infrared light 
delivered via LEDs for 30 seconds, applied directly to the middle of the biceps immediately before exercise. The exercise was elbow flexions, and they counted the number of repetitions and the overall time taken until failure. In addition to increasing the number of repetitions, red light led to significant decreases in blood lactate, so decrease in the waste product from exercise that would otherwise cause soreness, creatine kinase in the blood, indicating less muscle damage, and a decrease in C-reactive protein post-exercise. Now, high CRP levels are usually common in athletes because it indicates stress and inflammation in the body as a result of this tissue breakdown from working out. So the decrease in CRP here means that less breakdown was observed in a red light therapy group. There's a lot more studies that show similar outcomes too. For example, this randomized double-blind control trial studied the effect of red and near-infrared LED light on DOMS. What is DOMS? Well, DOMS stands for Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness. It's a term used to describe why we get sore around two days after a hard workout rather than immediately after. DOMS here was evaluated using a VAS scale, which is the most common scoring system to assess pain. Anyway, this study was in the upper body, specifically the biceps, and 27 subjects were split into three groups to receive either the LED therapy, a placebo, or the control treatment. Their exercise for this study was again the elbow flexion, so similar to a bicep curl, and immediately after exercise, the participants received LED treatment to three points along the bicep. The red and near-infrared wavelengths were delivered at 100 megawatts per centimeter squared for one minute and 20 seconds, and it was placed in direct contact with the skin on each standardized point. The treatment was given for five consecutive days, and on days two to five, pain was assessed using the VAS and the McGill Pain Questionnaire. The results showed that after exercise, pain associated with DOMS in the light treatment group significantly decreased after 48 hours compared to the control and sham groups. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, here's a quick reminder to like and subscribe to our channel for more health tips to keep you strong, active, and young. There was a case control study carried out on a set of identical twins. And while they didn't study a large number of participants, it's interesting to see how the light therapy versus placebo had an effect on muscle growth, stress, inflammation, fatigue, and DOMS in one twin receiving light therapy and one twin receiving a placebo. Light was delivered using an LED device at a wavelength of 850 nanometers, so light in the near infrared range. The total irradiance here was 500 megawatts per centimeter squared, and light was applied immediately after each training session, three times per week for 12 weeks during training. The device was used immediately after exercise and placed in direct contact with both quad muscles for 15 seconds, delivering 150 joules total. Both twins did sets of leg presses and leg extensions to target the quad muscle. Upon evaluation, the twin that received light therapy showed decreased VAS pain scores, indicating a reduction in DOMS, that's that delayed onset muscle soreness I was talking about. They showed a decreased creatine kinase in the blood, defense against oxidative stress, and decreased gene expression of inflammation and muscle atrophy. And muscle atrophy here is more simply just the loss of muscle tissue. The study also showed increased muscle hypertrophy, or gain of muscle tissue, and increased maximal load for the leg exercises, and decreased fatigue. Now, this is interesting because it's not just about muscle recovery, this is also talking about muscle gain. So to learn more about how red light might lead to muscle gains, go check out our related videos in our channel. After all this, it makes sense why using a portable device like Loombox has been a game changer for me. With in varsity sports, I was always traveling to and from the East Coast every other week, and our team loved recovery gear with us, like the Normatec, those big compression legs. We loved foam rollers, massage guns, compression tights, like you name it, we had the whole lot. But no matter what I did to recover pre and post game, I would really struggle to fall asleep at night because my sore muscles would literally keep me awake. If I had known what to do now, that a red light device the size of a book could fit inside of my backpack, my body would have thanked me so much for it. It's also great because you can take it on the carry-on through security too. So when I first learned all this, I was wondering if there was a specific time to use red light therapy around my workouts, or if I can just do it whenever. Now, most studies like the ones I showed you use red light immediately before or after exercise training for maximal benefit. But I personally like to carry my loom box around with me to relieve soreness at any point, and I'd probably use it the most before going to sleep on sore legs, sore feet, you name it, to help me relax just a little bit more. I use my device in near infrared mode for a full 12 minute cycle, or maybe two if I really need it, and hover it over the muscle group that hurts. I'll also make sure there's no clothes in between, it really needs to be almost in direct contact with that skin. Sometimes I will also use it before working out on the muscles that usually get sore, like my hamstrings, because there's evidence that red light can start influencing the markers of muscle recovery from the get-go. If you want to learn more about that, go check out our video on muscle gains after this. Now, some people need a higher dose and some people need less dose than others to feel the same benefit. This dose varies depending on how long you use red light therapy for and how powerful your device is. Most devices on the market haven't been third-party tested for irradiance, 
the numbers they report end up being much lower than the consumer really realizes. And a lower irradiance means you'd have to use the device for a really long time to feel any benefit. Not ideal if we're trying to treat multiple areas of the body, right? Imagine you'd be there for hours. So this is just a reminder to purchase a high quality device if you want to use the benefits of red light therapy for muscle recovery. And if you want more guidance on this, you can access our free ebook linked in the caption.